Hi everyone, I'm Phil from Driftworks and welcome to part two of fitting carbon ceramic brakes to my 964 Turbo. So in the last episode, you saw my buddy Al come over in his 996 GT3 so that I could try my wheels over his brakes to see whether that part of it fit. Um, and it did, well enough. All of that was because there was a set of 996 GT3 brakes for sale, PCCB brakes for sale. Uh, and I was talking to the gentleman about buying them. We'd come to a, a deal on price and all sorts. And then I found out that they're not 996. GT3 or 996 of any kind PCCBs. So <laughs> that didn't exactly go to plan. It turned out they're Panamera and although I think the rear discs are possibly the same on the Panamera, the rest's completely different. So that deal fell through and these things are a bit like hen's teeth. You're going to struggle to find a set for sale at any point and if you do see them for sale, who knows what they'd be, like 10 grand, something like that. So I got a little bit creative, uh, did a bit more research, ended up speaking to another gentleman and I bought some bits that were separate adverts for parts for carbon ceramic brakes from a Porsche but in theory they might work together and here they are. So what we've got here are the front discs that I'm hopefully going to use. These are 997 uh, PCCB and that makes them 350 or 356, I can't remember exactly, but perfectly fine in terms of size. They'll fit under the wheels, no problems. Um, here's part number. It's a bit light, but you can see the part number just about there. So those are in good condition, that's great. Now these are the complicated bit. These are 991 calipers so in theory they shouldn't fit because as far as my understanding goes the 991 PCCB are 410 mil which is huge compared to the 350 mil however I'll just quickly show you actually because I've tried this these fit on there just fine so bear with me one second There we go, 997 disc, bell and rotor, 991 caliper, and the part number is there. And as you can see, from the outside, it looks fine. And you can see the pad clearance here is pretty decent, but more importantly, you can see here, the pad profile is pretty much the same as the disc. The contact point is good there, good there, and good there. So, I don't know why that works, but it does. And more importantly, I've already tested this together and I've tried it underneath one of my wheels. Um, I think I've got a picture I'll post here. This is bolted up properly from the back um, obviously the caliper is still floating but it fits underneath the wheels without any spacers or anything like that looks like it's gonna fit perfectly so happy days rears this is all I have I have the calipers and the pads so I don't have the discs to work this part of it out yet but 970 is the part number so I'm not sure whether those are the same exact calipers that are on the Panamera and I could have either 996, 997 or Panamera discs. I think I think need to do a bit more research on that. I haven't quite worked that one out yet but calipers are good size and yeah I'll get around to phase two sorting the rear brakes out after I've got this bit sorted. So now on to the really fun bit trying to work out the mounts for the calipers. It's really not fun. Jay's wild beast is on the uh, two-poster. 
at the moment so I'm stuck with a four poster and I have a slight issue with getting a jack underneath it this is uh, unfortunately our ramp doesn't have a center jack um, something I need to get around to doing it's a bit of a crap ramp to be fair but yeah anyway uh, so I've got to use the transmission jack just to jack the front of the car up a little bit then to then get the um, jack underneath it faff central There is no way this is happening. If you see how the um, mounts are, they're very, very different. They're offset, so there's absolutely zero chance of this directly fitting. I just want to know how far away we are from fitting. Jumping forward to the next day, that was a Sunday yesterday actually, um, and I was here till about six o'clock trying to solve this issue, or at least get my head round it. I didn't expect to have it solved, but I knew that this was going to be a difficult bracket to make for this caliper. Um, it was more than difficult. Uh, it's looking at the moment like it might not work. Uh, I'll just quickly show you what I've done so far. And yes. It is wood. <laughs> so it's such a complicated bracket, I figured I'd make it out of wood to see whether it's physically possible first. Um, and yeah, this is the product of, I don't know, four or five hours. Uh, trial and error, recutting stuff, and just basically trying to make it um, fit as flush this way and as far sort of inboard to the center point as possible uh, to get, then get the um, PCCB caliper to then mount on that. This is a reference of the disc because the discs are so easily damaged I didn't want to have that on and also visually this gives me a bit more room to work with here. Um, so yeah, the this side here is the center point of the disc and it just gives me a little bit of a reference every time I put the caliper on and off. But yeah, as you can see, it's quite a complicated design and as I say, it currently it's not working. The, I've ended up making um, bolts, turning them down and turning the head down and putting a taper on the top of them to get them flush enough. And I can get them flush, flush enough for the caliper to sit on and not contact, but the caliper is poking out too far. It's not far enough inboard. It would work with a bigger disc. If it was like a 370, 380 disc, it would work, but those don't fit under the wheels. So that's no bueno. So I made life particularly difficult for myself because I decided to use Porsche calipers. Had I used a um, traditional aftermarket caliper or one that you find on other brands like I think Aston Martin and stuff like that that do use Brembo's as well, they have they don't have this weird offset um, mounting position. They'll have like a normal upright and upright there. And if that was the case, then something like the original brake adapter that I had for the Brembo's here, that would work. So basically you just mount to the hub, to the upright with those two bolts, and then wherever the other ones needed to be, 
you just make the bracket to make that work but yeah life's never going to be that easy is it so where I'm at at the moment um, I'll quickly show you actually bear with me a second so, it's a better look at how complicated this ended up being box back in and I can show you basically the issue here so as you can see the bolt heads even though they're turned down to be quite shallow um, they're actually contacting here on the caliper and here on the caliper so it's just ended up that those points are the worst possible position um, what I might do is move it all that way a little bit so that I've got so it then sits in this recess here and slightly beyond here but again I think it's going to be super tight so what I might be doing is well, what I am going to do, first of all, is remove the upright. These are the BBI CNC uprights, by the way. Um, what I might consider doing is milling down 5mm off each, each of the mounting points here, because I think that would give me the room that I need to do that. But really didn't want to modify the upright, but, you know, when needs must. BBI upright. Right, this should be a bit easier. And yes, I very, very much should have done this in the first place. So now I've got this set up on the bench. I've had a good look over it, a bit of a chat with Craig as well, and there isn't really another way for me to do this. Um, so the original idea of using this type of shape um, is still gonna happen, but for now what I'm doing is going about it a slightly different way. The plan was basically make this out of wood, see whether I can get it bolted up roughly where it needs to be, then translate this into some kind of drawing that we can 3D print a proper version, um, test on the knuckle, on the upright again, see whether the caliper is in the right place, any adjustments need making or anything like that. I'm going to actually go straight to designing a piece now that we're going to 3D print um, and it's going to start with just a simple piece that goes straight between the two mounts on the upright and give me one uh, bolting point here so this that's just in for reference so I could do the measurement just drill bit but yeah basically one one bolt will come out through there mount this in and then I can level everything up again and see whether I want to extend this essentially this conversion plate that we're going to make or whether I actually look at just tapping drilling and tapping into the knuckle itself which is a really meaty bit here on the knuckle and creating a spacer that I'd probably weld in place as well just for a little bit of extra strength but basically it would allow it to pinch and bolt in nicely but yeah first of all we've got to do the drawing for the um, thing that we're going to 3d print back in the big boys office with Ed hi and we've made a thing there we go how long is that going to take to print? 
probably a couple of hours, I think. Okay, sweet. Thank you. There we go. First prototype. I'm really happy with that. It's not correct, but it's really not far off. So you can see here, it's uh, so the caliper's not inboard enough, but it's relatively equal. So my very, very crude measurement that I did to measure this angle difference between the mounting face here and here is not far off. Um, what needs to happen now is basically material in the design needs removing from here equally. So the so the angle stays the same and basically this the whole caliper is allowed to move 5mm further inboard which we do just about have the room for by the looks of it if we take the edge off the corner there and there's lots of room here so yeah attempt two coming up oh we're also going to offset the caliper um, I don't know whether you can see quite see here but there's a tiny bit more room here than there is at the bottom here. So we're gonna basically space the whole caliper down by one mil on the design as well, and see whether that gets the disc exactly in the middle. So revision two got a real complex. <laughs> so this is slightly different. <laughs> now we tried to take into account um, how this would be machined out of aluminium a little bit and it still needs some work but first of all we're basically we're going to print this to prove the concept uh, and see the green bits here those are basically sub is supporting structure that it's going to have to print that will be snapped off once it's um, finished its print but yeah I'm going to give this a go overnight it's going to take about five hours you reckon that's what it says lovely That's a thing. See when it comes off. There we go. close but got a bit too clever <laughs> put a little chamfer on this and actually that's what's hitting here so I just need to um, file that out just quickly and then have another go okay so I've just kind of cut the corner off that and flatted it so hopefully we go back on now So that's looking really good now. It's not perfect yet. Obviously we've got to make a revision in the drawing there. 
and also it's still the caliper's still not quite far enough inboard. It needs like a mil and a half perhaps, just to get make sure that there's no lipping at all here. Um, we don't want the pads proud of the disc, or the disc really proud of the pads either. The insides pretty much perfect I don't think you can see there but yeah we've got plenty of room for that um, it looks like we've got room to move the caliper inboard a couple of mil as well again we'll just take it out of this face kind of but then obviously we need to build it back up to make sure that this remains thick enough but that's exactly how I did, I did it last time so yeah back to the drawing board drawing screen whatever so there we have it one 991 GT3 caliper fitted to a BBI CNC knuckle with a 350mm 997 disc using the power of melty special magic plastic. <laughs> so yeah, it's fitted really nicely. Um, it all works out lovely. It's uh, perfectly central. Um, pads uh, have the perfect contact. Uh, everything's equal. We've got all the angles correct. It did take a few revisions to get there, and many, many hours, I have to be honest. Um, but at one point I did wonder whether it was actually possible because it gets very, very close here. Um, but with Ed's help, we've managed to sort every single issue, and that is now a file that we're sending over to our machinist friend, Martin, to see whether he can make sense of it and make it out of aluminium. And yeah, just sort of looking at my original wood plan, that's kind of, I guess that was version 1, this was version 2, and I spent quite a lot of time on that, just to prove whether it was going to be possible or not. And essentially, if you look here, it's very similar to what I made out of wood. This is like revision, was that revision 2 on the 3D printer? Um, but yeah, all good, happy days, off to the machinist, uh, see whether he can make sense of it and see whether it actually can be made into aluminium. Um, so I'm probably going to leave the video here for now and I'll give you another update once we've hopefully got some bits of metal back and we start bolting it back on. But yeah, thanks for watching, please give us a like if you like the video, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, my personal Instagram is philmorrisondw and we have at Driftworks as well. And yeah, see you next time, cheers. At Driftworks, we've helped over 50,000 happy customers since 2004. Our huge online parts store is simple to use with superb shipping rates to anywhere in the world and finance options available for UK customers. We live and breathe wheel fitment, so if you have any questions about your own car or any of our products before placing an order, please drop us an email at shop at driftworks.com or give us a call. Thanks for watching.